Dr. Samar, you are a renowned advocate of human and women's rights and you were appointed as the inaugural chair of the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission in 2002. What can you tell us about the development of the human rights in Afghanistan? Yeah. First of all, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be uh, back in your office. Uh, I think um, if you look at the Afghanistan situation of human rights and particularly women's rights 13 years ago, using the word human rights was counted as a crime. And simply women were not allowed to walk on the street and they were not allowed to speak. Even their footsteps, noise, were disturbing the Taliban or the regime. I think in the last century, the, the only regime which was officially, were officially banning on girls' education was uh, the Taliban regime. Now, if you compare the current Afghanistan to that, uh, those years and that regime, there's a lot of improvement and a lot of achievement. If you go and look at the education system, maybe in Afghanistan we had uh, um, around 200,000 or 300,000 children going to school. Although I was running the high school for the girls, the only high school for the girls which was open was run by the NGO that I was running on that time. The only high school under Taliban regime. But with a lot of difficulties, that's another question. Uh, now we have more than 3 million girls who are going to school. We have around 22% of the higher education uh, um, children or uh, boys and girls who go to, to universities or girls. We have uh, um, a lot of girls or women who are participating on the health sector. Uh, the um, midwifery training almost done in all the provinces uh, in order to reduce the mother and child mortality because we were one of the highest. It was 1,600 per 100,000 uh, birth. And now it's coming down most probably up to 50%, although the Ministry of um, Public Health claimed that it came down to 325 per 100,000 uh, life or childbirth. But I think it's not that, that low according to the observation or monitoring of the basic social, uh, human rights that the Commission does because we still lack uh, a lot of female staff within the uh, different rural part of the country. And there's a lot of people who live in rural parts of the Afghanistan. Uh, in terms of uh, women participation on politics, we have 25% in the parliament. We have three ministers in the cabinet. We have women who had the Afghan Red Crescent. I am also the chair of the Human Rights Commission. Um, they are women in different level, but uh, are we satisfied with that? Of course not, because in the last 13 years, Afghanistan had a lot of opportunities to use the, the support of the international community. And it was actually the Afghan government, uh, lack of capacity, and also lack of coordination and lack of strategy by the international community because it was not really a united approach to most of the things. Because prioritization of the what should be done, uh, there were no system in the country. Of course, we, did, we had no national police, no national army, and no national security or intelligence service, which is key to the so-called Afghan national security forces. We have around 1,800, between 1,800 and 2,000 female police, because I, I say 2,000 because we still have some girls who are in the training. So they are already studying the police. So um, we practically have 1,800 police women working as a police, although we lost some of them in recent months. We lost two in Helmand, we lost one in Uruzgan, we lost the, uh, we, last week one in Baghlan. If you look at the freedom of expression in Afghanistan, 
it's quite good. I'm not saying that they are not harassed, they are not threatened by uh, authorities or different warlords, but it is much, much better compared to our neighboring countries. We had only one television, um, national television uh, center or in Afghanistan when Taliban came, half of it was broken and half of it was looted and Taliban simply put a lock on it and closed it up. But currently we have more than 60 channels of television. We have more than 300 printed media in the country. On that time, in Taliban time, we had only one newspaper, one official newspaper. Now we have women singers. I mean, they are singing on the stage. We have male singers. We have music everywhere, which we had before the war also. So there's a, uh, there's a lot of improvement on those things. It's not official ban on women's walking on the street, uh, traveling without male mahram, but of course it's still imposed in the, um, in the areas which is controlled by, uh, by Taliban or opposition parties. So there's a lot of improvement, but we could have done much better if we were prepared for a better strategy in prioritization and united approach among Afghans in the international community. So it seems that your personal goals have been met. What are your expectations on where the Commission should go after the election and beyond 2014? Um, I have to say that, yes, my personal expectation is not fulfilled yet because I, I really would like to see the, um, that the people's dignity is respected and it's respected without any uh, discrimination because the, every people should be treated equally. The rich should not be re respected differently than the poor. Uh, and the different gender uh, should be respected equally also. Uh, that is, that's a long way, I think. I have to say that the gender equality would take most probably another 50 years in Afghanistan. But we are in the right path, and we need a lot of support. Um, after election, I think the uh, National Human Rights Commission of Afghanistan or the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission should stay as strong as it is, and it should have more political and financial support by the government, by the new uh, administration. And that's why that we called on the different candidate that whatever they does, if it's promises for development, if it's promises for proper education, if it's promises for road construction, all of them should be based on human rights and should be based on promotion of gender equality. What kind of support do you expect from the international community? I think this is, a, a, the human rights is a universal value. We all believe on it. They should not treat, uh, treat uh, the human rights in Afghanistan in Afghan style. This is a universal value and every human being deserves to, to have those values and respect to their dignity. They should not overshadow because Afghanistan is a backwarded country and it's illiterate country and it's poor and it's uneducated. They don't understand these things. So the values should not diminish. They should treat Afghans with dignity and they should complete the job in Afghanistan. Because one of the, the aim and objective in Afghanistan to promote human rights particularly women's rights in the country. So their job has not completed, and please complete the job and do not leave us alone. And how could the support of the international community be improved? Um, I think uh, every single policy should be based on human rights approach. Security in a country will not be provided for, for building, for trees, for stones, for mountains. 
it is for the people. So that should be approached through human rights values or based on human rights values. If it's development, it should be the same thing. Development is also not done for the mountains, for the rocks that we have in Afghanistan, even for the mines that we have. So it is for the people of that country. And the people normally is consists of two gender, men and women. So all of them should be included to that. The excuse that some of the international community use respect for culture and tradition and religion of Afghanistan, not to touch these sensitive issues because they want to be friendly to the power broker, is not acceptable anymore. They should really stop using those excuses um, for promotion of human rights and women's rights in the country. What will your own political career look like in the future? I think I'm I'm very much interested on, on human rights and, and in education. And I think if we really want to have stability in peace and, and, and development in Afghanistan, that cannot be done without education and, and without education for women particularly and higher education. Yes, most of the donors are focusing on, on primary education. That was also part of the Millennium Development Goal and so on. But with primary education, we cannot build Afghanistan. We cannot make a prosperous, democratic country where the people could live and enjoy freedom and dignity. Thank you very much. Thank you.